Uh, the time is now 7.30 p.m. and this is the September 8th, 2022 work session of the Allendale Mayor and Council. Welcome to everyone who is joining us in the audience and on Zoom webinar. Um, at this time, I ask everyone to please mute your devices so as not to distract from the business of the meeting. There'll be one opportunity during this meeting for public comment and we will advise you at the appropriate time. Linda, please read the Open Public Meeting Act announcement. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, the notice requirements have been satisfied. The meeting dates for the year are confirmed at the annual meeting, are posted on the public bulletin board in the municipal building and on the borough website, published in the record within the first 10 days of the new year, and copies are sent to the Ridgewood News and Star Ledger. Notice of this meeting by the September 6, 2022 Sunshine Notice was sent to the record the Ridgewood News and Star Ledger and has been posted on the public bulletin board in the municipal building and borough website. Great. Thank you, Linda. Please conduct the roll call. Councilwoman Homan. Absent. Councilwoman Lovisolo. Here. Councilman O'Connell. Absent. Councilman O'Toole. Absent. Councilman Sasso. Here. Councilwoman Wozinski. Here. Mayor Bernstein. Here. Thank you. Um, to start off, on the agenda for the work session. Um, it's a proclamation to proclaim September 11th, 2022 as Patriot Day in the borough of Allendale in tribute to all of the victims of the 9-11 attacks and the many who rose to service in response. Um, this Sunday is the 21st anniversary of September 11th attacks on our great nation. It is um, truly hard to believe that 21 years have passed. In Allendale and around the country, we will pause to remember those innocent, brave, innocent and brave men and women who lost their lives that day and honor the heroes that provided selfless service. We are ever mindful of their sacrifices. We will never forget. And to the families and friends of those who perished, especially Donald Delapina of Allendale, we grieve with you. And now I'm going to read a proclamation, probably very similar to, or maybe identical to the previous proclamations that I've read um, in honor of this day. Whereas on September 11th, 2001, the peace and security of our great nation was shattered by terrorist attacks that killed nearly, nearly 3,000 innocent and brave people at the World Trade Center towers in New York City, at the United States Pentagon in Washington, DC, and in the fields of Shanksville, Pennsylvania. And whereas, although the terrorist goal was to strike a powerful blow to the hearts of all Americans and tear at the fabric of our nation, arising from the very ashes of that tragedy came a remarkable spirit of unity, compassion, and determination that will never be forgotten, just as we will never forget those who were lost and injured on that day in the days and years that followed. And those who rose in service during the rescue and recovery effort and in defense of our nation both here at home and abroad. Whereas the tragic events of that day instantly transformed lives, some through personal loss and many others through an unfamiliar sense of individual and national vulnerability. And whereas an unprecedented historic bonding of Americans arose from the collective shock, unifying the country in an outpouring of national spirit, pride, selflessness, generosity, courage, and service. And whereas many bro brave people heroically, tirelessly, and courageously participated in an extraordinarily difficult and dangerous rescue and recovery effort, and in some cases, voluntarily putting their own well-being at risk. And whereas September 11th will never and should never be just another day in the hearts and minds of all Americans. And whereas September 11, 2022 is the 21st anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on America. And whereas September 11th has been federally recognized as a national day of service and remembrance and has, be, and has been designated as Patriot Day to call upon all Americans to participate in this observance through moments of silence, the flying of the flag of the United States at half staff, as well as community service and charitable activities in tribute and remembrance. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor Ari Bernstein, on behalf of the governing body and residents of the Borough of Allendale, do claim September 11th, 2022, as Patriot Day in the Borough of Allendale, 
in tribute to all of the victims of the 9-11 attacks and many who rose to service in response. And be it further resolved that September 11th, 2022 will also be observed as a voluntary day of service and remembrance in the borough of Allenville and call upon our citizens and organizations to consider joining in this observance by engaging in activities of tribute, solemn remembrance, and charitable service. Thank you very much. Um, public comment. This is the first of three opportunities tonight for the public present to comment. Anyone from the public wish to speak? You'll have three minutes. Not seeing anyone. We will now go to the administration agenda review, administration part of um, the work session. Our regular session agenda consists of the second reading and public hearing for ordinance 22-13. There are 10 resolutions on the consent agenda. Does anyone have any questions about the items on the consent agenda? And we will also, uh, it came in a little too late uh, to put it on this agenda, but we will um, be adding in the regular session, a motion to authorize uh, Water Chair Liz Holman to execute the operation and management agreement effective with Veolia um, to freeze the rates that are now through next year. Right. Do I have that right? Yeah, the the agreement would have um, uh, expired on July 31st and new rates would have been in effect as of August 1st. But by this agreement, Veolia is agreeing to maintain the current rate in effect pending our closing of the transaction. Great. So at the end of the consent agenda in the regular session, regular session I'll ask for a motion to um, to put that forward. Yeah, to uh, to authorize uh, that and to authorize uh, uh, Councilwoman Holman to execute it. Great. Thank you. Um, other than that, fairly light agenda. We can start with um, committee reports. Councilman Sasso. Yes, thank you. So thanks to Ron Kistner and the DPW and Council President Wolzinski serving on facilities, parks and recreation is probably the easiest committee I've ever served on because everything kind of gets taken care of. So thank you for that. Um, but I wanted to report on Crestwood. Obviously this past Monday was Labor Day and Crestwood closed and it was another great season. Despite all the incredibly hot and dry weather, the quality of the water remained perfect really, as far as I could tell. Um, Thanks largely to Rich McDowell, DPW employee Rich McDowell, affectionately known as the Lake Commander. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, by the way. I didn't make that up. Um, all the other ball fields are, are already and probably already being used for fall sports. And again, despite the heat and dry, um, dry weather, they look great. Um, much better than a lot of other fields I've seen in other towns. Um, Crestwood revenue was up again. Amy, I know you mm -hmm. keep a close eye on that. If, if you have any numbers, maybe. Yeah, 363 com um, compared to 351 uh, last year. So, wow, yep. okay. And that's without our camps still yet. We still have another 16 coming in. from the So obviously Crestwood Lake is a not-for-profit, but we do bring in more revenue than expenses that, other yeah. than expenses that go out. Mm -hmm. And then the surplus, so, you know, in, in a, in a, for-profit private company that would be uh, retained earnings, but that goes into our general fund, correct, Lisa? right? Mm -hmm. any, any surplus from Crestwood goes into the general fund to pay for, obviously, improvements on Crestwood or quite frankly, whatever the budget committee decides to spend it on. So yep. Crestwood's not costing the taxpayers anything. In fact, it's one of the jewels of Allendale and it's making money for us to do other things and to keep that running. Yep. And still, despite all that, still the best deal around. Plan Naval uh, carried on the tradition and piped out. I wasn't there. I couldn't be there, but um, they piped out uh, the yep. season. And um, I think that's it for parks, recs, and facilities. Yep. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Amy? Like sure. Um, 22230, um, we are still moving forward with the construction plans. We are um, looking to get quotes. You saw Z Plus was on the agenda today uh, as, as, as uh, potential architects if we need them in the future to make any other tweaks. Um, also, the, um, the ordinance for the redevelopment plan um, will hopefully get approved today. And that's just because we're changing. We're just, it's really more um, perfunctory uh, type of admin stuff because we changed it to 
uh, make it um, a facility center um, 100% and no borough offices. Um, as Steve said, Crestwood was great. Clonaval was amazing. We thank them so much. And 9-11 is this Sunday, um, as we just heard the proclamation. So uh, thanks to Councilman uh, Ed O'Connell. I think I might actually have a trumpet player. Yeah, Everything else is, is in order. Our speaker this year um, is a survivor who was on the 88th floor. Um, if you remember that speaker series, I started probably like seven years ago. And he is actually worked with Donnie Della Pena, who is, we, we named our uh, memorial after, who was the Allendale resident that lost his life 9-11. So it all ties back in. So um, look forward to another beautiful uh, candlelight ceremony. That's it for me. Great. Thank you, uh, Suzanne. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The Land Use Committee had our August meeting, it was about two weeks ago now. Um, we'll meet again uh, the morning of our next land use board meeting, which is September 21st, Wednesday morning. Um, as usual, we have recurring, you know, property construction and maintenance issues, um, a few street issues. Trees seem to be an ongoing issue. Um, so we keep trying to remind residents that um, they do need to um, get a tree removal permit and talk to our code official when they're taking down in excess of six large size trees on their property per calendar year. Not in excess, any tree, up to six inches. Up to six inches. Yeah. Six yes. is the max. Six is. But one tree requires a permit. Um, and, you know, please get the necessary um, authorization before doing so and don't ask for forgiveness later because that's not the right way of doing things. Um, we have uh, once again encouraged our residents to um, talk to their neighbors. Um, they have concerns about anything. Um, that's the first move to make before bringing it to the borough. And um, just, you know, wish everyone a happy start to autumn. Welcome back, everyone. Great. Thank you. Um, my report will be brief. Um, back to school. All right, our kids are back in school. Back to school night. It's tonight, K through eight, and the high school. High school. Yeah. High, school's high school tonight. tonight but yeah. not K through eight. K through eight's another. That's next Thursday. Next, next Thursday. Uh, fields look great. Sports have started. Um, I have a Northwest Bergen Mayor's meeting this Saturday, uh, that meets once a month in Midland Park. Amy mentioned 9-11, um, public safety met earlier this week. We had a very productive meeting um, and that's it for the mayor's report. Um, staff reports, Ray? No uh, no shortage of keeping busy, but uh, Mr. Kister and I are in almost daily contact. And I will say that our water utility meetings are no less than three times a week. Uh, so uh, a lot, lot moving forward, but short of that, uh, nothing further. Great, thanks so much. Uh, Linda? Uh, nothing to report. Okay, great. Thank you. Lissa, anything? The chat still went out earlier. I got mine today. Thank you. Final bill. Yay. Final forever? Like forever? <laughs> oh, for the year. Oh, right. got excited there. Uh, Great. And they're due in November. Great. Thank you very much. Ron? I have nothing. Okay. Uh, Chief Dillon? Thank you, sir. Anticipated start date for the new Hillside Brookside School SLEO. It's a special law enforcement officer for the protection of our students and staff. October 3rd. Anticipated rollout for body cam October 1st. Mm -hmm. Traffic concerns around town continue to be investigated and addressed as appropriate. Here to date, fire calls 163. Here to date, EMS calls 529. Here to date, police record entries and calls for service 11,296. Thank you. Thank you for all of your work and of your department. Tyler? A few quick matters to address uh, myself, John Gill, Amy. Ron and I met uh, regarding pending improvements to the council chamber IT situation. So we should have some um, exciting news about that in the very near future. Just trying to optimize what we're trying, um, trying to do for the folks at home and the folks um, here in the building. So that's coming very soon. Um, on the chamber of commerce front, Ron, myself, 
um, Claudia Sanchez and a couple other members of the chamber board met earlier this week um, regarding formally Allendale Festival Day, which is now going to be Fall Fest. Um, we're still aiming on a, you know, tightening up a couple of details with that, but we should have something formalized um, by this time next week with regard to the date. Um, you know, and hopefully moving forward with that. It's been challenging this year, but um, yeah, we're trying to make something work to get people into the downtown area. The date is not settled so yet. So we were looking at October 15th, but there might be a change to that, but okay. hopefully by this time next week. It's just, it's been challenging this year trying to form the event for a variety of reasons. But yep. We're, we're trying to make something work to get people downtown. Great. Well, we're trying to wait until the 15th. Uh, they good chance to be ready to the 22nd. We're going to so confirm that. I spoke to Ron earlier today about that. So we'll do that. And then um, in terms of the phone system, total calls here to date um, for all the borough facilities is 110,891. Continue to go up there. And other than that, everything else is smooth <laughs> and uh, part of our normal operating procedure. Great. Thanks for that. Right. Um, any unfinished business? Any new business? No. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, request a motion to adjourn the work session. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Uh, Seven forty-six. We'll be back at eight o'clock promptly. Are we on? Yes. Thank you. The time is now 8 p.m. and this is the September eighth, twenty twenty-two, regular session of the Allendale Mayor and Council. Welcome to everyone who is joining us tonight in person and via Zoom webinar. At this time, I ask that you, the public present to please mute your devices so as not to distract from the business of the meeting. There'll be two opportunities for those present to speak during this meeting and we will advise you at the appropriate times. Uh, Linda, please read the Open Public Meetings Act announcement. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, the notice requirements have been satisfied. The meeting dates for the year are confirmed at the annual meeting, are posted on the public bulletin board in the municipal building and on the borough website, published in the record within the first 10 days of the new year and copies are sent to the Ridgewood News and Star Ledger. Notice of this meeting by the September 6, 2022 Sunshine Notice was sent to the record, the Ridgewood News and Star Ledger and has been posted on the public bulletin board in the municipal building and borough website. Great. If you can all please join in me and rise to salute the flag. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Linda, please conduct the roll call. Councilwoman Homan, absent. Councilwoman Lovasolo, here. Councilman O'Connell. Absent. Councilman O'Toole. Absent. Councilman Sasso. Here. Councilwoman Wozinski. Here. Mayor Bernstein. Here. Uh, next on the agenda is public comment on agenda items only. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard? Mr. Thomas, come on up. Name and address for the record. And you will have three minutes to speak. For the record, I'm living at 30 Arlton Avenue and the name is James Thomas. Uh, Mayor, I note that Ordinance 2213 is on the agenda tonight. Does that mean that the suggestions that were put before you about six weeks ago had no merit in your thinking? No, I don't think it means that. I We heard, we listened to you, but it's, um, so I wouldn't say that what you said had no merit. We heard and, and we listened. And uh, obviously it was not uh, adopted. Ray, do you want to speak to what the, um, we introduced this at the last meeting, I was yeah. not here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's fair comment. And, and I, I think I mentioned at the time that my understanding, and I don't think anything has, has changed uh, to your question, um, was that uh, the modification um, that is uh, a part of this ordinance based upon um, the uh, the change from what included a municipal component to a um, a community facility, um, that it was the intention of the borough to continue to proceed along those lines uh, and not to divest itself of the forward lot uh, at uh, at 220. So I think to the mayor's point, uh, your, your points were noted, uh, but I don't think that it changed the direction that the borough intended to go. And I think that that's the reason why this is on for second reading. 
The mayor, will you permit me to make a statement to the members of council on this point tonight? Um, is it brief? Well, about four minutes or less. And this technically is uh, on agenda items. So uh, he has the podium. You would be making it under the other portion. So I don't see any reason why not to let Mr. Thomas. I'll, I'll, I'll read it if you will permit that. Okay. <clears throat> Council persons, by accepting Hampshire's letter of intent on the reconstruction project, your agents committed $3.5 million of future borough funds to a building of unspecified size, shape, form, and appearance. I have contended here before that that was a legal blunder on our part and an unwarranted profit grab by Hampshire. The deal was confirmed in December of 2018 when former Mayor White signed a contract which said the building would be 15,000 square feet. Hampshire would spend our three million and a half on it and the borough would come up with more if needed. That contract also provided the very interesting fact that the municipal building would remain under ownership of Hampshire and the borough would simply occupy a part as their borough hall. 18 months later, in July of 2020, Hampshire, citing poor business conditions and the virus, unilaterally and arbitrarily revised the whole plan to its favor. One change which went out largely unnoticed was the reduction in the size of the new municipal building from 15,000 square feet to 10,000 square feet. Still, Hampshire would spend five, three and a half million dollars of the borough's money, money and attorney Wiss and Mayor Bernstein did not object to that. When ownership of the new building was finally granted to the borough upon completion, the developer locked in the 3.5 million in an escrow agreement, which releases our money to Hampshire as construction occurs. It makes no difference to the developer, whether it be to a town hall, a gymnasium, a senior apartments, or even public toilets. Subsequently, the square foot cost of construction as projected by Hampshire rose to a level which made a new town hall of any size simply out of reach. Your fiduciary duty prompted you to cancel the new municipal building, and that was the correct action. At that point, Attorney Wiss with the aid of the battery of lawyers, engineers, and consultants to whom you have already paid nearly half a million dollars, should have negotiated the steps that were proposed here six weeks ago. They are without any question in the best interest of both parties. Apparently they have not done that. Instead, you intend to have Hampshire build a smaller, non-essential structure <clears throat> with the borough's $5.3 million, $3.5 million, consumed at the ballooning rates that you have already found intolerable. That simply is census. It is fiscal responsibility be damned. Members of council, this evening you should table the resolution and direct your attorney to negotiate the elimination of a borough building from the project and the release of the borough's funds from escrow. You can then build a proper civic or sports center or whatever on borough property as you desire. Thank you. Um, Mr. Thomas, um, I, I'm not going to address your point specifically, but I am gonna say that your understanding of the facts are, are incorrect. Um, Councilman Wazinski, if you'd like to add. To I that. just want to make for the record, I do would like to. Can, can I just say that this this is um, public portion with respect to um, matters on the agenda. Right. So um, I would I would suggest to the governing body that uh, corrections to the record can be made um, after public portion is closed. Okay. Okay. Anyone else from the public wish to be heard? Not seeing anyone. Um, next on the agenda is uh, the second reading and public hearing um, ordinance 
Uh, Linda, please read the title of Ordinance 22-13. The following ordinance published herewith was first read by title only on August 16, 2022 and posted on the public bulletin of the lobby of the municipal building and borough website. Ordinance 22-13, an ordinance amending the redevelopment plan for certain properties situated along West Crescent Avenue. Great. Other than Mr. Thomas, whom we, we've already heard, I open the floor to the public for public comment on 22-13. Not seeing anyone, I would request the council member to make a motion to move to pass and adopt on second and final reading, ordinance 22-13, notice of same shall be published according to law. So moved, Wolzinski. Second, Sasso. Now, now would be appropriate should any member of the governing body wish to address anything that was said by way of public comment prior to voting. Okay, I would just like to make a, um, a correction for the record that um, the Mr. Thomas just has a misinterpretation of the purchase and sale, that the 3.5 was a value that we negotiated in the total acquisition cost. So we did have it we did say that it was going to build a municipal center but the 3.5 wasn't necessarily tied to a certain square footage it was just a detail in the purchase and sale and the 3.5 it was the value of 3.5 in the total acquisition cost if we didn't have any building there that 3.5 would have been added in to the to the cost of the um contract cost of 13 million 250 Okay, thank you. Um, the motion was uh, made, moved, it was seconded. Um, Linda, please conduct a roll call. Okay. Councilwoman Homan? Absent. Councilwoman Liversolo? Yes. Councilman O'Connell? Absent. Councilman O'Toole? Absent. Councilman Sasso? Yes, I want to say one quick thing. Mr. Thomas used the word arbitrary. Nothing was done on this project arbitrarily. And I vote yes. Councilwoman Councilwoman Wilzinski. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Next, we move to the consent agenda. I would request a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Sasso. Second. Second. Levisolo. Linda, please conduct a roll call. Councilwoman Homan. Absent. Councilwoman Levisolo. Yes. Councilman O'Connell. Absent. Councilman O'Toole, absent. Councilman Sasso? Yes. Councilwoman Wilzinski? Yes. Great. Well, that was a consent agenda. Right. Don't forget we have. Yep. So now we're going, as mentioned in the work session, um, I, we would request a motion to authorize uh, Councilwoman Water Chair Liz Holman to sign the uh, operations and management agreement. Um, with Veolia that will confirm that the fees, that the rates remain the same as they are now, um, as it was for the year ending July 30, 2022 going forward. So I'd request the motion for that. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Uh, 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 do I roll call or roll in favor? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Homan, absent. Councilwoman Lovisolo. Yes. Councilman O'Connell, absent. Councilman O'Toole, absent. Councilman Sasso? Yes. Councilwoman Wozinski? Yes. Okay. I already asked about unfinished business, already asked about new business. We did our committee reports. We did our staff reports. Um, last time, open the floor to the public on any matter. Not seeing anyone. Um, I would request a motion to adjourn the regular session. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, everyone.